Hi, I'm Robert, binocular designer and Analog Sky. Analog Sky Stargazing binoculars feature 2-inch focusers to allow the use of 2-inch eyepieces. These eyepieces allow the widest views of the night sky and unlock binoculars' best feature, the ability to see the night sky at its absolute brightest. But can 2-inch eyepieces be used by very many people, and do they offer any kind of compelling advantage? Internet experts aren't necessarily going to get this question right, because it's something they've never seen before for themselves. Unless you're willing to spend several thousand or even tens of thousands of dollars on completely custom-built binoculars, it's not something you were able to just go out and buy before Analog Sky. So when you're out there looking for expert opinions, I suggest asking yourself a few questions like, has this person actually seen it with their own eyes, or have they just thought about it in their mind? What kinds of things does this person like to look at? And how would that affect their taste in equipment? For example, I have friends who only look at itty-bitty planetary nebulae, friends who look at even smaller and dimmer galaxies, and other friends who mostly just look at tightly spaced double stars. They couldn't care less about wide or bright views. And those aren't the people I would look to for an answer on the topic of wide, bright views. As someone who, full disclosure, likes wide, bright views, here's my answer. At night, when you're dark adapted, your brain combines the light from both eyes into one brighter picture. It's how nocturnal mammals forage, and you have that technology in your own brain. That's the full brightness you see when you look at the Milky Way with just your dark adapted eyes, your personal 100%. When you close one eye to look through a telescope, you throw all that away, and you lose tons of light and detail. No way to get it back, no matter how big your telescope is. Only binoculars can promise the ability to see the night sky as bright as possible at your personal 100%. Now, other binocular telescopes are limited to inch and a quarter eyepieces because they're not really designed for pointing up at the night sky. They're basically daytime binoculars with the space logo. The inch and a quarter eyepieces either severely restrict brightness or field of view. Now, even binocular telescopes that offer two inch focusers don't necessarily offer two inches of light. One binos Scope kit uses undersized 35mm mirrors, wasting the potential of 2-inch eyepieces. Kunming makes a 150mm binocular with 2-inch focusers sold under various brands. It certainly has large prisms, but I've never seen a clear aperture published for either the front or the back of that prism. Maybe it matches their 30mm UFF wide field eyepiece, but if that's the largest field stop it supports, it's still leaving a lot of light stuck inside your binoculars. Matsumoto EMS is the only system for building custom binocular telescopes I'm aware of with the option for mirrors large enough to fully illuminate 2-inch eyepieces. Then there's Analog Sky. Our 50mm binoculars use 50mm mirrors, so your eyepieces are completely bathed in light. Analog Sky Heart are 80mm binoculars designed for 100% illumination of a 45mm field stop which covers ultra-wide eyepieces like these 36mm 72 degree botters. The field stop is the hole where the light comes in the bottom of the eyepiece. Now, these bright, wide 2-inch views are truly stunning and give you a whole new perspective on the cosmos. At dark sites, you're seeing incredibly subtle variation in the background sky. You're seeing huge DSOs you've never seen at the eyepieces, like the Heart and Soul, the Angelfish around Mesa, the O3 arc off M31, and the vast stretches of IFN. And you're finally seeing the summer Milky Way clouds like Scutum and the Sagittarius star cloud at the same spellbinding brightness as your naked eyes. So yes, there is a marked difference between 5mm exit pupil, 6mm exit pupil, and 7mm exit pupil. Now, there's also the question of eyepiece diameter. Aren't 2-inch eyepieces too big? 2-inch eyepieces are 2 inches because the glass inside them is larger. That's what gives you the wide views. Now, human eyes are spaced apart a certain distance, and it's hard to use eyepieces that are wider than this distance. In the United States where I live, studies show that women have, on average, a narrower interpupillary distance, or IPD, than men. Studies differ in methodology and population, but a common average number for women in the U.S. is 59 millimeters. In East Asia, it's significantly wider at 61 millimeters, and almost everyone fits within 3 millimeters to either side of that average, in a distribution with the gentle bell curve to the wider side and a somewhat sharper fall off to the narrow side. Analog Sky's focusers support a minimum IPD of 58 millimeters. I take it very seriously as an equity issue that women can use our binoculars, and from the beginning, I've gone out of my way to share the view with women and kids to test whether they can comfortably use our binoculars. At outreach events, I reach dozens or hundreds of people per night. 
and I've been putting on those events for eight years with Analog Sky's 58 millimeter minimum IPD focusers. There has never been a single person who couldn't enjoy the view through our binoculars for an extended period of time. That includes my own kids starting at age three or four. That includes a whole troop of Girl Scouts who all enjoyed the moon one cloud-filled night. Heck, that even includes a three-year-old who built her binoculars with her dad. For people with very narrow IPD, it's easy to adjust the mirrors in an analog sky binocular to provide a little more room. And I'm even working on a prototype focuser that may allow you to shave as much as four millimeters off the spacing, giving a minimum spacing of 54 millimeters. Now, just because the binocular supports 58 millimeters IPD doesn't mean the eyepieces do. Is there a variety of eyepieces to choose from that anyone can afford and enjoy? I made a list of the currently available 2-inch eyepieces that work with an IPD of under 60 millimeters. Here it is. The Botter 36 millimeter aspheric, the Botter 31 millimeter aspheric, the Agena SWA 32 millimeter 70 degree, the Agena or Sivbony SWA 26 millimeter 70 degree, the Sivbony 34 millimeter 70 degree, the Seabird Optics 34 or 35 millimeter 65 degree, the Teleview 27 millimeter Panoptic, the Teleview 55 Plossel, the Masuyama 32 85 degree, the Masuyama 26 85 degree, the Kunming 30 millimeter UFF, the TPO GSO 42 millimeter Superview, the TPO 30 millimeter Superview, and the Explorer Scientific 62 series 32 millimeter. Analog Sky also has prototypes for 46 millimeter and 35 millimeter two inch eyepieces with a diameter of 58 millimeters. They work great, they're fun to assemble yourself, and they're cheaper too. So we'll keep you posted when those are released. So yes, there are a lot of two inch eyepieces for you to choose from for all budgets that virtually everyone in the world can enjoy. Your kids, your grandkids, everybody. If this weren't the case, I honestly wouldn't have gone through all the trouble to design around two inch eyepieces. And yes, there's an incredible advantage to using two inch eyepieces. I first saw it for myself and my friend Frank Sapansky's amazing binoculars, and I verified it with dozens of highly experienced observers under dark skies and thousands of curious stargazers at outreach events. This is something really new, really special, and I'm really excited to share it with you. Like and subscribe to find out more about Analog Sky's two wide revolution, and then sign up for our community for free. That's at members.analogsky.co, and when you log in, you'll see for yourself how much fun people are having building and sharing the view through their Analog Sky binoculars with everybody.